Hi friends, uh, today we are going to discuss legal aspects of medical practice or else you can call it as medical legal issues in medical practice. Myself, uh, Professor Suresh Bharadmat, I have done my MD DNB and also medical law ethics and also human rights law, PhD in law from National Law School. Currently, I am working as a Professor of Psychiatry, Head of Telemedicine Center, Head of Forensic Psychiatry Services at Nimans, Bangalore. I do also teach in National Law School as an honorary teacher for Medical Law Ethics program. Before I start my presentation, I would like to have a disclaimer. This presentation is basically for academic purpose only. If you would like to have any legal opinion, please do contact an advocate. This presentation is not a law themselves or not a substitute for legal profession. This presentation do not discuss any individual legislation like MTP Act, PNDT Act, TOHA Act, POCSO, Mental Health Care Act or RPWD Act and so forth. There are many acts which I am not going to discuss. Now we are entering to the important concept of medical negligence. How the medical negligence? Like we have Volam's test, we have Bolipo test and also the following clinical practice guideline. But how the court takes this medical negligence, we will discuss now. See, medical negligence or professional negligence, it has to have three important criteria. First and the foremost, there is a duty of care. Okay, Because of duty of care, there is a breach in that duty. So if there is a breach in the duty, that breach should have caused a damage. Okay. That damage should be foreseeable, not remote. I'll repeat again. There should be a duty of care between the doctor and the patient. That is basically contract has been already established. And there is a breach in the duty of care. It may be act of omission or a act of commission. The breach should have occurred in the duty of care. Because of the breach, there should be a damage. That damage should be foreseeable, not remote. If all these three points are proved in the court of law by the patient, the negligence is established. Depending upon the severity of the negligence, if it is severe gross, then it will be considered as criminal negligence. If it is at the, what we call it as the normal error of judgment or below the standard care, reasonable degree of care is come, it will be civil negligence. So that is how we are going to discuss. So first and the foremost, how to establish by the patient the duty of care? If the patient has come to your OPD and you are given a prescription or a receipt, the duty of care exists. So that is the contract. It is called as implied consent. So, but they here, the duty of care, what I'm trying to tell you here is the patient has come, I've accepted you. Now the question many of the doctor has, can I have a right to refuse a patient? Of course, the doctor has right to refuse a patient. If he is busy, he cannot see after 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock or he is going somewhere else on a trip or he has some other work, he may refuse the patient. But however, there is one class. You cannot have a choice in emergency care. So in emergency care, you have to provide the care. This stems out from the Parmanam Kataria versus Union of India. It is in 1989. This is again a landmark case in the uh, history of uh, Indian scenario. This is again a young man was going in a scooter. A car comes and hits him. So this scooter fellow has fallen down, has a sustained severe injury. The car is missing. Now. The car goes off. So a social worker comes there, takes this young boy to one hospital. And the hospital says, no, no, it's a medical case, uh, sorry, legal case. We cannot treat him. You, it has to be police complaint has to be given. So they take it to the next hospital. There also they say that no, no, you cannot treat him, it is a legal case. By that time, they say that you have to go to a hospital, like a medical college hospital near, which is around 20 kilometers. By that time, they reach 20 kilometers to the medical hospital, the person dies. This social worker becomes very unhappy, writes to the Supreme Court telling that, what kind of law is this? The Constitution of India, Constitution of India talks about right to life under Article 21, and you have made mandatory requirement of legal case in accidents. So during that time, Supreme Court takes the cognizance of the issue, issues a letter to the Medical Council of India or and also to the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare asking for the clarification. What should we do? Is that 
legal comes first or the right to life comes first so discussion goes on and finally the supreme court comes with this landmark judgment telling that the doctors when they are getting registered for their license to practice they have taken an ethical oath hippocratic oath basically it says that i will take care of my patients at any cost so that at any cost basically at any time so that's where the supreme court says that now this ethical obligation has to be converted to legal obligation because doctors are not doing their duty during when there is a emergency care is required in that landmark decision it has said all legal issues to be dealt later right to life under the constitution of india article 21 right to life and liberty prevails under any circumstances and the doctor has a duty to provide care now this is a very good decision but however many doctors will say sir what will happen to my fees i am working in a primary health center how can i provide a case for a accident case yes the duty of care is very clear here in emergency situation if you are in a primary health care center provide first aid you can start iv fluids arrange an ambulance give a referral talk to the family send them and call to the nearest hospital where the patient can be shifted these simple procedures are called what we call it as emergency care the court also knows they cannot expect a high fi treatment in a phc at the similarly in a private hospital you are a doctor when the case is come to the emergency emergency room emergency unit in the casualty you have to start treatment it may be first aid it may be checking pulse bp airway and then the rest of the other things follow you as a doctor you have a now you have it was earlier ethical obligation now it is a legal obligation to provide care during emergency so that is what is called as duty of care so duty of care in normal situation it is dependent upon whether the doctor accepts or not whether he can give he can give treatment or not whether i am competent to give a treatment or not in emergency care there is no such or uh, you should not have such dilemma you have to provide care either it may be first aid it may be counseling it may be referral letter arranging an ambulance all those issues comes into picture moving to the breach of duty of care so there is a breach i have now seen a patient in opd now i have to provide a care so there are two types of breach can occur one is act of commission act of omission act of commission basically doing something which no other reasonable doctor would do if i am working in a district hospital as a physician no other physician in a district hospital will do similar situation so that is called as act of commission or a reasonable degree of surgeon would have not done no surgeon will leave a scissor in the abdomen after surgery so that is act of commission coming to the act of omission not doing something which every reasonable doctor will do it is for example if a pencil in injection has to be given you have to do a skin sensitivity test and you have to write there so you have to mention that you have to do give pencil in injection after the test dose only so who is responsible if the nurse doesn't give test dose you will be held responsible the reason is why care is liability you have to make sure either you have to give or under your supervision the nurse has to give that's what is breach of duty of care is so that means you owe a duty of care to the patient and you have to provide the care any act of commission or omission which is not in the course of proper reasonable degree of care will be considered as breach of duty of care now because of breach of duty of care there is a damage the damage should be foreseeable that means the breach of duty should have resulted in pain it may be physical mental economic pain and that breach of duty should be foreseeable directly for example what is this foreseeability and damage damage is basically they have given an injection the patient without a skin test sensitivity test the patient goes into hypoxic injury and then uh, he has to be admitted in icu whatever the cost for next 8 to 10 days will be considered as economic and the pain physical pain what he has undergone if the patient dies then it also may treat for whatever the compensation required increases so what is this foreseeability in this foreseeability is basically for example if a patient comes to my hospital and he has a slight cough i give him paracetamol so he takes paracetamol takes the paracetamol in the hospital 
He walks outside. On the way, when he is crossing the road, suddenly a rash driving car comes and hits him. And he collapses there. Now, the family says, because the doctor had given parastimol, when he was crossing the road, he collapsed and the car, unfortunately, went above him. So, this is a tricky situation now. Whether parastimol causing collapse is a question which, for is it foreseeable or the road traffic accident is which is foreseeable. That means it should be directly related. It's not the rash car coming and hitting him versus parastimol causing him collapse or accident and then collapse. So, this is how the discussion to be taken. Foreseeable, it should be directly related, not indirect. That is foreseeability. So, duty of care to the patient or the patient family member. This is another one discussion which has been recently has been arised. Whether I have to provide care to the patient or the patient family member. So, this is one of the landmark case which has been discussed recently again in 2020. So, this is an important uh, landmark case which has been discussed in Lancet 7th March 2020. This is judgment in ABC case rules on confidentiality. Basically, duty of care towards the family member. Here the daughter goes to the court telling that the doctor did not provide a duty of care towards the family. That is the case. Now, in this case, what happens? Mr. X shoots his wife and kills her in 2007. Mr. X was arrested and during the trial, they find that they had some problem with his behavior. He has been examined by various doctors and then they say he is not criminally responsible. So, they make it as a diminished responsibility concept and they, instead of a murder case, a manslaughter case has been now put across to him and he has been now sentenced to be present. So, he is not be given uh, what we call it as a capital punishment once we have been given diminished responsibility. And in 2014 around during that time, he has been diagnosed to have uh, Huntington's disease because he has developed abnormal movements. During that time only the doctors come to know that he is having Huntington's disorder or a disease. Then is at the same time, his wife is also about is pregnant. They reveal him, they tell him, why don't you discuss with your daughter about your Huntington's disorder? But he is not happy with that. He says, no, I don't want to discuss with her. I, he refuses to give consent to discuss with the daughter about his Huntington's disorder. But later, she gives birth to the child. And then she comes to know his father has Huntington's disorder. And she also has been tested positive for Huntington's disorder. Now she is so unhappy that she is having Huntington's disorder. Now she would have transmitted to her child also. And since the hospital did not inform her prior, now she wants compensation from the hospital. This is how the case goes. Now just remind you what is Huntington's disorder, whether there is a duty of care to inform the family members, that is the daughter here in this case. What is Huntington's disorder? Huntington's disorder is autosomal dominant disorder. In the chromosome 4, Huntington's gene is there. This Huntington's gene where if there is a CAG triplet, repeat if it increases from 39 to 40 the more the repeat more the severe is the disorder and more the antington protein goes on accumulating because of this accumulation there is a neuronal degeneration so the neurological degeneration occurs in certain parts of the brain the person develops abnormal movement rigidity abnormal behavior also how this gene is transmitted each offspring gets one set of chromosome from the father, one set from the mother. So, if the mother in this case, what the diagram shows, mother has given one set of chromosome, that chromosome is transmitted to the male or to the female child. What are the chances? 50% chances are there a child developing Huntington's disorder. That means it is a substantial risk. So, what would have been the decision of the court in this case? Does the duty of care stops at the patient or to the family member? This is a beautiful discussion which has been discussed there. So, the daughter when she came to the court and she also says that if the, I had knew the, that I, my father is dwelling from Huntington's disease, I would have considered MTP. That is her argument. But the court refused to accept her claim. Since your father refused to give consent to discuss about his illness to you, we are not going to give any kind of compensation. And they refuse compensation. But however, the court also said, the 
leading professional practitioners or the GMC to consider the assessment and informing the risk for the third party for disclosure has been put forward. But though there is no compensation given, it has opened a Pandora's box telling that it's high time that we need to consider this. So this is one beautiful case. And now at this point of time, the duty of care is only for the patient at this point of time. Even in India, it goes in the similar way. Summarizing the medical negligence, coming back to that, every doctor has a duty to act with a reasonable degree of care and skill. Negligence is the breach of legal duty to care. That is how it goes. Duty of care, breach in the duty of care, either by act of omission or commission. And because of the breach of duty of care, there is a damage. Either it may be physical or medical, or it may be, you can call it as a economical damage occurs. And that is clearly foreseeable then the damage will be given and it has to be proved by the patient party. So there are various cases have been discussed on this basis and the, even the Supreme Court has accepted these steps and it is valid in India also. The practitioner must bring to his task a reasonable degree of care, skill and knowledge and must exercise a reasonable degree of care. Neither the very highest nor a very low degree of care of competence is accepted in the law. Basically, if a doctor working in a district hospital or a similar to district hospital should exercise what we call it as a reasonable degree of care. It does not expect him to provide all India Institute of Medical Science of Care or a National Institute of Mental Health Neuroscience of similar to that care. It asks a similar doctor, a district doc, district hospital doctor, what care he provides. The similar care he should be able to give. That is a reasonable degree, not very high, not very low care has to be given. Nor a district hospital doctor is allowed to give a PHC level of care or high as all national institute care. So that reasonable degree of care is very essential in this case. That's what it says. So negligence may result only in civil liability, but gross negligence may result in criminal liability. Basically negligence, we discussed professional negligence. That is basically duty of care, breaching the duty of care, and that breach causes damage and damage is foreseeable. If there is this breach is very severe very gross then only criminal case if it is moderate reasonable degree of care it is only civil case if it is an error of judgment nothing that is how the court has gone so in even in jacob matthew it also discusses about this in jacob matthew case also thank you very much